Huawei wasn't just another Chinese tech company. By the late 2010s, it had become a global leader in telecom infrastructure, quietly building the backbone of mobile networks across Europe, Africa, and Asia. Then came 5G. Faster, smarter, everywhere. And Huawei was ahead of the game, offering affordable cutting-edge 5G technology before most Western firms had even launched prototypes. But with speed came suspicion. The U.S. government raised alarms. Could Huawei's equipment be used for espionage? Would Chinese laws force it to hand over data to Beijing? Could the world's communication systems be exposed one base station at a time? Huawei denied it all. No backdoors, no data sharing, no threat. But the narrative was already set. The U.S. blacklisted Huawei and American companies from supplying it and urged allies to do the same. Some followed, like the U.K. and Australia. Others hesitated, weighing costs, contracts, and consequences. For Huawei, it wasn't just a PR crisis. It was a global blockade. Access to chips, software, and global markets was suddenly restricted. Its smartphone business was hit hard. But in telecom infrastructure, the battle continued, country by country, policy by policy. Huawei found itself at the center of something bigger, not a tech rivalry, but a geopolitical chess match between the U.S. and China. That's how a private company became a proxy for global power struggles. And that's why this case study matters, because it shows students how tech and politics collide, gives educators a lens into digital sovereignty, and reminds professionals that in the 21st century, technology isn't just innovation, it's influence. This case is now core in global tech strategy, international relations, cybersecurity policy, and geopolitics of innovation. Follow us for more learning case studies like this, stories that help you decode the power behind the platforms and lead wisely in a world where tech is never just tech.